Hello brewers and lab nerds. Today I'm going to show you how to make agar plates and uh, agar slants or slopes. So what it is, is essentially a gel-like substance that you can grow yeast on. You can also add other things to it that I can show you in later videos that will make it a selective growth media where it will inhibit certain things and make other things grow. So this one is just for growing yeast, having colonies on it so that you can keep it in your fridge uh, for uh, six, up to six months, uh, actually up to a year in slants. So the procedures are pretty simple. First you need to make a starter, a regular yeast starter the way you normally would. If you've seen one of my other videos that shows how to make shelf stable starters, then uh, you've seen this one before. This is basically just wort that's sitting on the shelf and ready to go at any time. It is sterile. So to make this recipe for agar that we're going to use right now, you're going to need uh, one liter of agar, oh, excuse me, one liter of wort, 15 grams of agar, and then any yeast nutrient that you prefer, like uh, ceramices, if you, uh, if you have not added it to the starter already. So you want to filter out the hot break from your starter so that does not go into this recipe. It's pretty much fall down to the bottom here so I'm just going to pour carefully. I'm going to pour one liter of this starter into my Erlenmeyer flask. Made a little bit of a mess. Okay, so we have one liter of that in there. Then we also want the 15 grams of agar. You want somewhere between 10 and 20 grams of agar, depending on how dense, how th um, solid you want that final gel to be. Some labs like it harder, so they will use 20 grams, and some like it a little softer, so they'll use 10 grams. That is the agar. Then you want to, you just sprinkle that on there, you want to re, let it rehydrate. And once it rehydrates, then we'll swirl it around and put it in a water bath to make sure it's fully dissolved. We'll come back once this is hydrated. Okay, it's now a couple of minutes later. The agar has fully hydrated again. And we can now swirl it around or stir it if you have anything to stir with. So we don't have to be very... Uh, sterile in our procedures right now because all this is going to be pressure cooked here in a little bit. So we'll try to swirl it around and then what I'm going to do is put it in a water bath just to make it a little easier to uh, dissolve it 100%. When it's uh, done dissolve or when I think it's done I'm going to just lift it up and look underneath and see how it looks because uh, you want to look for any agar particles that is translucent that you can be seen on the bottom. Okay, we'll come back once this is heated up and fully dissolved. The uh, agar has now been dissolving for about two, three minutes. So just lift it up and hold it up to the light. And I don't see any agar on the bottom. So that means we are ready to go on. So from here, what we want to do is to uh, pour what we need into the slants. What I did was I pre-measured out how much I wanted in the slant so that when it lays on the side, the gel will form a nice long working surface, but be at least one or two centimeters from the top of the, uh, the tube here. So I found out for me, it's going to be 11 milliliters of this agar wort mixture. So you can just pour it in if you want to, but I have a pipette and a pipette pump, so I find that to be a little easier. So I'll just draw up. 11. And then just put that into each one 
Oh, the tubes. Then the cap, you put it on, but you don't twist it all the way down, you back it up a little bit. Alright, I'll finish this up and get back to you. I have now poured all of the tubes with the agar mix. And we're going to put that inside of the pressure wash, excuse me, pressure cooker, along with some water that I've already put in there. We also need to sterilize the uh, wurch and the plates that we're going to pour the, um, our plates into. I'm just going to, we're going to use all of them today, so I'm not going to put this tape on every single one of them. But I just want to show you, this is an indicating tape that will change color when it has been sterilized. So under the right circumstances, which is 15 degrees, excuse me, 15 PSI for 15 minutes, this tape will change color. So we'll conf uh, confirm that by comparing before and after. But what we're gonna do is put all these in there as well. See if we can fit. See if we can fit it all in one, or if we need to do two rounds of this. Maybe just reconfigure it a little bit. There we go. All right. So it all fit in there. Then we just close it up. Turn it on high and wait for it to get to 15 PSI and we'll start a timer for 15 minutes.